please. He's a great wrestler. He's a great wrestler, but my goodness sakes, they're 50 pounds Who different. are you to, to, to doubt El Dandy? Hey, what's going on, everyone? For Wrestle Trivia, I'm your host, Kevin J. Callis. Yeah! And you're watching Wrestling Jeopardy, the ultimate interactive show where you're the contestant. Everybody get hype! Come on, go! Get hype, baby! Come on, go! So grab a pen and paper, and let's go to the board now and check out the categories that you'll be quizzed on in this episode. Starting with Bret Hart in WCW followed by Survivor Series teams that almost happened. Next up, we have Superstar Documentaries, then wrestlers' names that begin with the letter Z, and last but certainly not least, Masked Tag Teams. Si, senor. And as always, we begin our game with the 200-point jobber round, the easiest round in wrestling jeopardy. Can you answer all five of these questions correctly, or will your sunny days be over forever? Oh, boy. All right, and here we go with the first clue from the Jabber Round. Eric Bischoff announced on the November 10th, 1997 episode of Nitro that the hitman was going to come to WCW and join this controversial heel faction. Now, this happened the day after the Survivor Series and the infamous Montreal Screwjob. The correct answer, what is the NWO? <laughs> And here comes the second clue from the Jobber Round. Bad News Brown was supposed to join the Million Dollar Man and Rhythm and Blues. However, he disappeared from WWE and was replaced by this mystery partner as the fourth man. And this happened at the 1990 Survivor Series where The Undertaker made his surprise debut. And that brings us to Superstar Documentaries for 200. Fill in the blank here with It's Good to Be Blank, The Jerry Lawler Story. And the correct answer, what is It's Good to Be the King? Moving on to wrestlers' names that begin with the letter Z for 200. This spiked hair superstar took to YouTube in 2011 with the viral show Z, True Long Island Story. You know the correct answer. Who is Zack Ryder? And here comes the last clue of the job around. Name this masked tag team. As Doom, Butch Reed, and WWE Hall of Famer Ron Simmons were a powerful force in WCW's tag team division in the late 1980s and early 1990s. All right, so how many questions did you get right there? All five? Either way, it's all in good fun, and that's exactly what Wrestle Trivia is all about. High five! Oh, 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 oh. <laughs> But it's time to make things a little harder here in the 400-point round, kicking things off with a clue from Bret Hart in WCW. Due to a 60-day non-compete clause from WWF, Bret served as special guest referee for a match between Bischoff and this living legend at Starcade 97. Now, personally, I think that Larry Zabisco is a living legend, not because of wrestling, but because he actually got stoned before he delivered his WWE Hall of Fame speech in 2015. <laughs> and we're on to another clue from Survivor Series teams that almost happened. Macho King Randy Savage made a change to his King's Court after the Widowmaker Barry Windham left WWE adding this monstrous wrestler to his team of Dino Bravo and Greg the Hammer Valentine. And the correct answer here, who is Earthquake? Here comes another clue from Superstar Documentaries. Fill in the blank here. Jake the Snake Roberts, pick your blank. And that would be pick your poison. 
And let's hop on over to the 400-point clue from Wrestler's Names, who begin with the letter Z. This wrestler claimed that he was the real star of the movie No Holds Barred and pledged to destroy Hulk Hogan. And that would be Tommy Tiny Lister, who also went by the name Zeus. Can you feel the power? And let's finish up the 400-point round by having you name this Masked Tag Team. Among WWE's most popular teams in the 1980s, the Killer Bees, B. Brian Blair, and Jump and Jim Brunzel often put on their masks midway into a match just to perform the old switcheroo. Wait a minute, McMahon, what is this now? All right, we're hopping back to Bret Hart and WCW for 600. In his first WCW match, Bret Hart defeated Ric Flair at this 1998 pay-per-view. And the correct answer, what is sold out? I once put my little cousin in a sharpshooter for calling Brett the Hitman Hart. Brett the Hitman Fart. And we're on to Survivor Series teams that almost happened for 600. Ravishing Rick Rude was ready to team up with Earthquake, Dino Bravo, and the Barbarian until he was suspended from WWE. But thankfully, this fellow Heenan family member took his place. And that would be that tough Tongan SOB, who is Haku. All right, let's fill in the blank of another superstar documentary, Randy Orton, the blank of a predator. And this is a little play on words because of the faction that Randy was initially in when he started his WWE career. What is Randy Orton? The evolution of a predator. And I would also accept the evolution of a predator. Precisely. Moving on to wrestlers that start with the letter Z for 600. This radical manager arrived in WWE in 2013 to help guide the career of Jack Swagger. Previously known as Dirty Dutch Mantel, but in WWE, he was called Zeb Coulter. And let's finish up the 600-point round by having you name this Masked Tag Team. No, it's not Edger Christian. It's not the Hardys. It is from somewhere in Latin America, the Conquistador. All right, we've blown past the halfway mark. We've got 10 questions left in regular Jeopardy, starting off with the 800-point round with this clue from Bret Hart in WCW. On the October 4th, 1999 Nitro, Bret defeated Chris Benoit in a special Owen Hart tribute match at this arena where Owen had died that previous May. Quite an emotional scene here, even uh, looking back on it these days. The correct answer, what is the Kemper Arena in Kansas City, Missouri? And we're on to another clue from Survivor Series teams that almost happened. There have been so many Survivor Series teams throughout the years that have either worked or haven't worked or people have been substituted. So best of luck to you if you know your Survivor Series teams. Go ahead and place your wager now. All right, time is up. Here is this episode's Daily Double Clue. Substituting for Jean-Pierre Lafitte, this wrestler pinned Marty Jannetty to become the sole survivor from the Body Donna team in 1995. Having recently turned heel, the correct answer is the one, two, three kid. 
Now at this Survivor Series, the Body Donnas defeated the team of Barry Horowitz, Sparky Plug Bob Holly, Hakushi, and Marty the Party Janetti, who are collectively known as the Underdogs. However, I think that K-Sama here had a much better name to call this team. He came up with the title of The Village People. Are you listening to me? And that brings us to another superstar documentary, fill in the blank, living on a blank, The Scott Hall Story. And that would be living on a razor's edge. Jumping back into wrestlers' names that begin with the letter Z, in 2023, this wrestler returned to Impact TNA Wrestling, attacking Chris Sabin during his match with Trey Miguel. And the correct answer here, who is Zachary Wentz? And we're closing out the 800-point round by having you name this masked tag team. Weighing in at a whopping 1,129 pounds, the machines were comprised of Big Machine, a.k.a. Black Jack Mulligan, Super Machine, a.k.a. Axe of Demolition, and Giant Machine, a.k.a. the eighth wonder of the world, Andre the Giant. Although Bobby Heenan could never ever prove that the Giant Machine was in fact Andre. There's no Japanese wrestler seven foot five. You know that and I know it. 30 of them aren't seven feet five. If you think you're a diehard wrestling fan, this round is designed to put your knowledge to the test. So get those thinking caps on. We got five clues left, starting off with a thousand point clue from Bret Hart in WCW. Bret Hart and Goldberg won the WCW Tag Team titles by defeating this duo on the December 9th, 1999 episode of Thunder. And that would be the bald-headed duo known as Gerald and Patrick, a.k.a. Creative Control. We're on to Survivor Series teams that almost happened here for a thousand. The Big Boss Man's Enforcer Squad was supposed to be comprised of Rick the Model Martel, the Honky Tonk Man, and Akeem. But the African Dream missed the event and was replaced by this wrestler. I always love Akeem because it gives me the opportunity to do the dance. Brother. However, the correct answer here is the aforementioned Bad News Brown. And here comes the final clue from Superstar Documentaries. Fill in the blank here. The Life and Times of Blank. And that would be the Life and Times of Mr. Perfect. Two more questions to go in this regular Jeopardy round. Here comes a thousand point clue from wrestlers' names that begin with the letter Z. Billed as being from the continent of Europe, this masked WCW jobber wore a pink and black outfit that not even Bret Hart could get away with. Now, Jim Cornette once quipped on commentary that, is this guy the master of the pan flute or something? Well, the answer to that question is obviously no, because that would be Zamfir. However, the correct answer to this question is Zan Panzer. And let's close out the board by having you name this masked tag team. And that's Real Life Brothers, Ray Phoenix on the left, Pentagon Jr. on the right, a.k.a. the Lucha Bros. Don't leave yet. It's time for Final Jeopardy. Let's find out what this episode's category is. Stampede Wrestling. This highly influential but now defunct regional wrestling promotion in Canada was founded by the patriarch of the Hart family, Stu Hart. Now, it's possible that you don't know that much about Stampede Wrestling, but that really shouldn't stop you from betting at all, eh? All right, time is up. Here is the final Jeopardy clue for this episode. Stampede Wrestling was famous for this professional wrestling school located in the basement of the Calgary, Alberta, Canada mansion home of the Hart family. Good luck.
The Dungeon was so named because of the intense training methods employed by Stu, which clearly worked as generations of top performers survived while honing their skills. And that does it for another episode of Wrestling Jeopardy. Check out these cool people here, our official Wrestle Trivia fan club. And you can join too. Just check out the link in the description below. And don't forget to leave a comment with your score. I love seeing how everybody did and, and reading to see if you learned something new or if you had a favorite question. Thank you once again for watching. My name is El Dandy, Kevin J. Callis, and I'll see you next time.